What's up guys, it's, it's Alex Johnson, aka Alejandro Johansson. Um, I'm going to do another movie review today. Um, this one is about this Netflix movie called Veronica. I don't know that it's actually a Netflix movie, I mean a Netflix original rather, but it is on Netflix. Um, this movie has been hyped up as the scariest movie of all time, you know, it's kind of, you know, you read the synopsis and it's talking about how this, this high school girl allows a... Uh, allows this, this thing into her house and it starts attacking her and her family and so you know it kind of has you know the similar trope of a lot of horror flicks um i'm gonna give a, a breakdown of the synopsis i don't i don't do spoilers y'all so i'm not i'm gonna be very brief in my synopsis i'm not gonna give you too much away um usually if it's revealed in the first 10 minutes of the movie i don't mind talking about it but um, anything past that or any major details, I try to leave out so that y'all kind of can go into a movie with your own expectations. Um, so, I'll get right into it. So, or after, sorry. Um, so after the synopsis, I give kind of my perspective on the visual effects, the way the world looks in the movie, um, and, you know, kind of a breakdown of, you know, my perception of the costumes and whatnot. Um, this movie kind of takes place in a modern-ish era. It's re rel as far as the events within the movie, it's relatively recent. So the costumes aren't going to be anything crazy. Um, it's stuff that people in Madrid would wear, you know, in recent history. So I won't go too much into the costumes in this because it's just not a big deal. Um, and then the next part of it, my review, is kind of my personal opinion of the story, of the script the acting um and then my final part is where i i give my general score of the movie and also compare that to rotten tomatoes as audience scores um i will start off and say the audience score of rotten tomatoes is a 45 um which if you hear all the hype or read all the hype on facebook this movie sounds like it's going to be terrifying um it's not it's it's really not um, and I'll kind of get more into that as I go into the review, but, um, so real quick on the synopsis. So it's about this girl, um, her name is Veronica. It's the namesake of the movie. Her dad is dead. It doesn't really, to my acknowledgement, I don't think I missed it, but it's possible I did. Um, it doesn't really explain where or how her dad died. Um, he's just not there. They, he had to have died somewhat recently because she, Veronica has three siblings and one of them is young, like probably around four. So he's not been gone super long. At most he's been gone five years. Um, anywho, so Veronica is essentially acting as a single mother. Her mother is still alive. Her mother works at this, uh, this bar, cafe. Um, in the background, you can see espresso machines, but she serves all kinds of desserts, and the people in there kind of act like they're getting drunk. So maybe it's a bar slash cafe. I don't, not 100% sure. Um, maybe that's a thing in Madrid, which is where the movie takes place. Not 100% sure. Um, anywho, so the mother is really out of the picture for a couple of various reasons. So Veronica is the one that gets the kids out of bed every day. She takes them to school every day. Um, she helps them make dinner. She she kind of delegates duties to them, but really she's the one doing everything in the long run. So, um, anywho, so she, a solar eclipse is happening and she's purchased a Ouija board and she and two friends go downstairs in the basement while all the other students and teachers in the school are viewing the solar eclipse and uh, Veronica attempts to contact her dad and in typical horror movie fashion it goes wrong uh, instead of making contact with her dad she makes contact with something else entirely um, and it clings to her and it clings to her family so that's it for the synopsis. I don't want to get any more into it. Um, I don't want to ruin it for you. If you've seen horror movies, whether they're good or bad, um, you kind of already know what to expect. And even if you haven't seen a horror movie, um, 
you probably have a firm idea of how it's going to play out. Um, horror is one of my two favorite genres. Uh, the other is like detective kind of stuff. I'm going to do a review on Red Sparrow today, and Red Sparrow was right in that niche for me. It was phenomenal to me. A lot of people hated on it, but I love that movie. But we're not talking about Red Sparrow, we're talking about Veronica. Um, so, the it's this movie plays on a lot of horror movie tropes. If you've seen horror, you're it's a horror flick. It's gonna fit a lot of those tropes. But anyways, so now on to the breakdown of the visual aspects of the movie: the costumes, the world, the uh, visual effects, the special effects, all that. Um, I will say the special effects of this movie were on point. Um, there's a couple scenes where shadows are a very big deal, um, and those visual cues um, do a lot for the environment uh, as far as how it affects the portrayal of the creature in the movie, how it affects that creature and its per the, the people's perception in the movie. Um, the, I think that a major thing about this movie is that it doesn't try to look pretty. Um, it's a horror movie, so of course it wouldn't, but like, it, it takes a very low class family and gives you their perspective. Um, sp more, more specifically the perspective of, of a 15 year old girl. Um, the movie's not done through her eyes, but you kind of, it, it's like you hover on her shoulder the, throughout the movie. Um, she's the character you follow the most, which makes sense because the movie's named after her. Um, so, as far as costumes go, I kind of already touched on this. It takes place in Madrid and in relatively recent history. Um, the movie's apparently based on a true case that happened. Um, the cops show up and this is what they saw. This is what they learned. Um, the movie's relatively recent history as far as real life events. So costumes aren't anything crazy. Um, the girls, or, sorry, the kids go to a school where they all wear uniforms. So the kids kind of wear the same stuff every day. Um, Veronica wears uh, band shirts, you know, teen angst, rock out, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and one one character and it her name's she's nicknamed Lady Death by the students. Um, she wears an outfit. There's nothing too crazy about hers. Um, she's blind. I, I don't know if it was contacts or if she's actually blind in real life, but her um, her eyes are on point. I will say that. Um, but as far as the the visuals go, um, a solid portion of the movie takes place at night. And it lends itself to a darker movie, but also to a movie that portrays how, visually portrays how bleak the outlook was for this family. Um, the special effects were on point. The, the creature in it is, uh, without giving you spoilers, he's very faceless. Um, both physically and kind of emotionally, if that makes sense. Um, it's just there, and it's uh, it just kind of lingers, and it kind of creeps, and does stuffing on the shadows rather than coming right out. Um, which, for me, as a horror movie buff, a lot of monster movies bring the monster out very visually. This one kind of creeps into existence as the movie f unfolds. So that's that really. Um, visual stuff was on point in my opinion though. I'm going to get into what I didn't think was on point though, which is the story um, and the script and the acting. Um, I will say the acting, actually pretty decent. Um, the, the kids acting roles, uh, their job was phenomenal. Uh, as far as child actors go, they're great. If these kids were to show up in another movie, I wouldn't be disappointed, um, based on their performance in Veronica. Um, 
but the story is a very basic, very, it's a, we got a horror movie going on behind me, I guess. Um, the, it's a very basic horror movie. The story is not anything that's going to surprise you. The, the supposed twist is, I mean, I saw it from the get go. It, it's kind of one of those things. Like if you've watched a horror movie, you know what's coming. Um, so the movie, it, 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 the story doesn't suck. I won't say that. It, it's it's not garbage. It's not something that you're going to hate, I don't think. Um, but it doesn't try to be different. And kind of one of the things that I look for in the horror movie genre is for stuff to be different. Um, I, don't, I don't want them all to be the same. There's a formula that works for horror and I think that we figured that out and we kind of exploit that but what I want to see in that genre is growth and diversity um, so that's that's a big thing and there's really you know everyone purported that this was the scariest movie on Netflix and yada 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 it's not scary I mean it might unsettle you at times like I felt the, the hair on the back of my neck stand up a couple times but it's not scary. It's really not. Um, and the movie has been overhyped, honestly. Um, so, the story is not bad, but it's definitely not great. The the acting, though, I will say was pretty solid. Um, not disappointed in the acting. Uh, now, here's kind of where we do the general score in my videos. Um, I, at best, would give this movie a 6. I'm leaning closer to a 5, maybe a 5.5 .5 total. Let's call it a 5.5. .5. Um, that's actually not too far off from the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Like I said, their average uh, audience, excuse me, average audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is a 45. So, um, and I think a lot of people are kind of disappointed in how overhyped the movie is. I think that they... You know, came away from it expecting to be terrified, and the movie's not terrifying. Um, the nothing, nothing about this movie is necessarily different, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that hurts a lot of people's perception of it. I know I went into expecting more, but um, you know, it's not a bad movie. It's not a great movie, though. So it's a it's a good watch, um, especially if you horror are a horror movie buff. Um, I'm not going to go and recommend it to a bunch of friends because it's not great, but I do think it's worth the watch if you are interested in that genre and you're wanting to see something you know different. It isn't Spanish, I will say that. Um, it has subtitles. I don't know if a dub version exists. I wouldn't recommend watching a dub version if it existed. Um, I'm all about subs versus dubs, um, or subs over dubs rather. Um, I feel like you lose something when you when you switch over to a dub, like you lose something in translation. Um, so, if that's a turn off for you, you don't want to watch this movie either, um, with it being subbed, I mean. So, um, but yeah, not a bad flick. I like I said, I don't know if it's a Netflix original or not. I know it is on Netflix. It's the easiest way to access it for most people. So, um, but I give it about a five point five. If you watch it, feel free to let me know what you thought of it. Um, also let me know in the comments what you think about this, this review, any constructive criticism you got, you know, shoot me a like or whatever y'all want to do, but yeah, appreciate, appreciate y'all watching. And like I said, I'm going to do i I'm going to do one for Red Sparrow. I watched that last night and I also watched Shape of Water last night. I'm a little late to the game on Shape of the Water. Uh, my theaters here didn't play it for more than two weeks, so I, I had to kind of go out of my way to watch it. Um, but I'm going to do a review on both of those. And I'm also seeing Sunset Boulevard in theaters today. It's a, a classic movie from 1950. My theater does, or my local theaters do what they call flashback cinema, where they play older movies on Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, and they pick one movie to play. They give it four showings, a two o'clock and a seven o'clock on both that Sunday and that Wednesday. So um, I've seen some cool old movies that way. I saw Godfather a couple weeks ago. It was awesome. I've never seen Godfather in theaters. Probably never will get to again. Um, and it was an awesome experience to see it that way. So, um, but yeah, I've seen Sunset Boulevard today. So I'm gonna do one on that. I'll call it a retro movie review. So <laughs> I'll let y'all uh, let y'all have a good day. Appreciate you.